In a News Hub exclusive, we can reveal the Department of Internal Affairs has found a litany of failures by the country's biggest casino to address gambling harm. Investigations reporter Michael Mora has the story. Michael, what have you found out? Yeah, well, guys, an audit of Sky City Auckland by the regulator in 2019, which was finalised last year, found the casino was below standard in nine out of ten compliance areas. That's despite warnings to rectify similar issues in earlier audits. Internal Affairs told me the issues it identified were systemic. Sky City staff were dismissive of problem gambling issues, failed to identify excluded gamblers, and internal affairs states there's a high likelihood underage customers are accessing the casino. In one case, a banned gambler played pokies for 28 hours straight before staff noticed that she wasn't supposed to be on the premises. Sky City says it's made a lot of improvements, but our own undercover filming would suggest otherwise. The main gaming floor, Sky City, Auckland. The pokey machine lights and noises that fuel addiction. This report found significant shortcomings in the casino's efforts to minimise that harm. You've read the report. How would you describe all those failings? Oh, look, it's appalling. The Problem Gambling Foundation's Andre Frood. Look, this was really concerning. What we're seeing here is clear breaches of host responsibility. Being a responsible host is a legal requirement. A casino's licence depends on it. But Internal Affairs found many failures. Very few harm and risk assessments were carried out. There was a dismissive attitude by some staff to problem gambling issues. There was insufficient staff. Player ethnicity was not analysed as a risk factor, despite Māori and Pacific customers being at greater risk. More than half of customers enrolled in a programme to monitor their spending and time spent at the casino breached their limits. Despite this, Sky City took no action. The breaches were ignored. Sky City's processes for identifying excluded or banned players was deficient. In one instance, an excluded and trespassed player got into the casino and played pokies for 14 and a half hours and 28 hours straight in two separate incidents before anyone noticed anything. For somebody to sit at a poking machine for 28 hours just should not be able to happen. News Hub obtained the audit under the Official Information Act. The Minister was unaware of it. It is unacceptable. Uh, that is just, as I say, very, very distressing and I would expect us to be doing better than that. Sky City failed nine out of ten areas. Internal Affairs told News Hub it concluded the failings were systemic within the Auckland Sky City site, although no enforcement action was taken. Where is the accountability? You know, if this was alcohol, for example, and a venue served an underage patron, uh, there would be consequences. The ministers announced a review of pokies at pubs and said casinos could be next. She admitted to News Hub she isn't sure the laws are working. We're making sure that our legislation and our regulations are fit for purpose. Absolutely, I think there should be consequences. Sky City says the audit was done in 2019, and since then they've introduced many improvements, including facial recognition technology to identify excluded gamblers. They've hired more staff and put in place better training. For customers who game continuously for long periods, the rules state that after five hours they must be interrupted and encouraged to take a 30-minute break. So we put that to the test. My colleague entered the casino and started playing pokies at 9.44am. The time ticked by, we had a stopwatch running and made video recordings to verify the time spent at the casino. In total, he spent five hours and 57 minutes playing pokies. You've just left, how are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty tired and pretty washed up. Uh, it was a long time to be playing in front of a screen. He only stopped for a couple of brief toilet breaks before resuming play. Remember the rules state staff should interact with a customer after five hours and encourage them to take a 30 minute break. Were you at any time told by anyone to take a break? Absolutely not. Are you certain of that? Uh, yes I am. At close to the six hour mark, I asked my colleague to leave. He did, exhausted, broke and certainly not a winner. He'd lost the $300 he came with. Well, OK, Michael, what has Sky City said about our colleague who was playing for so long without interruption?
Yeah, well, Sky City has reviewed its own surveillance footage and basically admitted to me that what we have shown tonight on News Hub should not have happened. A spokesperson told me Sky City makes efforts to continuously improve its host responsibility practices, which the company calls a, quote, strategic priority. They went on to say that they have evolved over the last few years with new technology and more resources, but did acknowledge that there is always room for improvement, Mike. Michael, thank you for that update.